Hey, good morning, everybody. Yes, I'm actually starting a vlog from inside my car at a grocery store parking lot. So I got up at 5 a.m. and uh, had a little breakfast, started uploading some stock footage, and drove out here, waited in line, got to the front door to find out that the store's policy is now 60 and over for the first hour, which I'm okay with because in this day and age, we gotta protect everybody. So I'm back at seven, missed sunrise because of it, and now I gotta go stand in this nice long line of people who are about to run through the store. Oh boy, welcome to COVID-19. about two hours after sunrise right now so still technically the morning but the soft beautiful morning light is gone so we are hiking through this Phoenix Norm Preserve we are going to head up to the top of Dixie Mountain which is the highest peak here in this preserve and hopefully along the way we'll be able to photograph the uh, blooms the uh, cactuses are starting to bloom now uh, we are just in an absolutely beautiful time of the year here in Phoenix. Now this is also, might be getting close to one of the last times I come out here in the middle of the day because the rattlesnakes have also emerged. It's still a little bit cool out, but there's a chance we might see one sunning itself on the rock. So, <laughs> yeah, this is the kind of environment I live in. This is also a bit of a training run for me because I'm trying to figure out how to pack my gear so I can do some more longer distance, high altitude type of hiking. So, what I'm thinking, either may have to gut this backpack and figure a way how to pack everything inside of, including the tripod, which by the way is the problem. The tripod, I love it, but it is heavy. And it's also hanging off my back really far and it keeps causing me to lean forward. So I might also think about switching over to my hiker's backpack, which is going to have a large enough compartment to put the tripod in it, keeping it closer to my body so I'm not always leaning forward. Okay, you tell me get out of breath because we're ascending. So behind me in this cactus is something that, at least for those of us who live in this neighborhood, look forward to. And we have some great horned owls, is what I think they're called, uh, a nesting pair. And we're just waiting for the babies to come out. And, well, I can see mama's up there. No babies just quite yet. Yeah, it's kind of hoping. I did see a little fuzzy feather fly out of the nest about three or four days ago. So if they're up there, they're staying down low. But yeah, mama's up there keeping an eye out for uh, any trouble. So I squeezed in just one more shot here and I came up to pack up the camera. Make sure there's no snakes. So I'm following two rules of composition. One's a standard one for your photography. The other one involves wildlife. So if you turn on your grid lines on your camera, so you have two vertical, two horizontal, look where they intersect. That is where you want to put your subject is where they intersect. So I have the owl in the upper right hand corner of the frame. The other one involves wildlife. You want most of the frame to show where they're looking. So since the owl's in the upper right hand corner of the screen, she is looking down into this valley behind me. And that is where I have most of the frame so that the viewer gets the, an idea of what the owl is looking at. They can't see the valley, but they know that the owl is intently staring at something. So for those of you who do stock photography, shooting in broad daylight, you still can sell your images. So here's an image I took last year that sells about one to two times a month. It's a panorama 
of some saguaro cactuses with this beautiful blue Arizona sky. Now, I'll be honest with you, when I took it, I didn't really think that it was going to sell very well. But like I said, it sells about one, one to two times a month, so I'm pretty happy with that. We have our first look at the top of Dixie Peak. Hopefully be up there soon. We got a very long climb ahead of us though. Well, the lizards are out, which means the rattlesnakes are out, but there's quite a few people hiking out here today. So I'm not exactly too worried about it. They'll be helping me scare away the rattlesnakes off the trail. Hundred and fifty more feet to her at the top of this park. Good workout. Well guys, sorry I didn't do any of my commentary up there. There was some other hikers at the top and I didn't want to disturb them. Uh, so what I wanted to show you guys is this. It is a circular polarizer. Now this little device fits on the end of your lens and it's able to spin around. And what it does is it filters out glare. Now whether that glare be on the rocks, now if you look at this, video I took you can take a look at the rock in the lower right hand corner of the screen and you can see how it glares and then the glare just disappears as I rotate the polarizer 90 degrees and when I rotate it another 90 degrees the glare comes back now also take a look at the vegetation so I'm doing a, an image here or shooting out over the landscape and right now because of all this rain that we've had out here look at this vegetation all throughout this preserve so plants also glare on their leaves so you can see how as I rotate the polarizer that the glare disappears and it brings out the vibrant colors of the green this is not an effect that you can get in Lightroom. Even though you may see some products advertise polarizer uh, on their little slider bar, really what it does is it just turns the sky blue. So here's what it looks like. I'm shooting out this way uh, towards the uh, Bradshaw Mountains on the other side of the valley here. And you can see how the sky gets a really dark blue because it takes the glare out of the sky. So that's really what those settings do, but they can't handle the actual glare. Now, if you're wondering how people are able to take images and you can see through the surface of the water, it's because they're using a circular polarizer. So it might be something to consider to put into your camera kit. Uh, there's different varieties out there. Uh, you can... Uh, uh, check out some polarizers in the link below if you'd like to try and pick one up But I can tell you you're just simply not going to be able to get the effect that a polarizer can give you Through Lightroom or any other product Well, there you have it. That is how I do my broad daylight photography. I like to use a polarizer 
simply because it gets rid of a lot of glare and it brings out the vibrant colors. Now again, middle of the day photography is really not the thing I normally look for. I'm usually working or location scouting or just enjoying being in the location where I'm at during the middle of the day. And then during the morning and evening hours is when I'm out shooting my photography. It's just, I like the light a lot better than during those times of the day. But don't let that stop you. You can still get your stock images. You can still do beautiful landscape photography in the middle of the day. Yeah, it's a little bit harder, but focus on your composition. And if needed, bring out that circular polarizer to get rid of the glare and make the colors around you more vibrant. Something that you just cannot do in Lightroom. You cannot simulate a circular polarizer. That's something you've got to do when you take the shot. All right, everybody, hope you enjoyed this video on how to use a circular polarizer and also how to take some photography here in broad daylight. If you like travel, if you like photography, click that subscribe button and follow along as I continue to pass on my tips to all of you. And remember, never stop exploring. Thank you.